Maybe you're interested in keeping your front wheel drive unit going in a straight line when you use it as a rear wheel drive unit. If you're going to take the engine and transmission the entire drive line out of the front of a car, put it in the back of a car, you might have to figure out how to keep that thing in a straight line in a little bit better method than what I'm using here. So I have some ideas on how this is done. I've done it once before. This time I did it a little bit different. Well, the last one of these I made, I made out of square tubing. Uh, link up here somewhere possibly, and uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Anyway, I made that out of square tubing about that size. I could make this out of round or square. All right, step one, disassemble the steering rack to make the no steer steering rack situation work. Um, hey, this screwdriver worked on the other side. This video is long. It includes everything I did in the process of building this no steer steering rack. If you want to skip to the actual machining and welding part of the assembly, skip to the 18 minute mark. There we go. Now we'll see how much fluid runs out of this one. The other one was like half full. Yeah. I'd say that steering rack leaks a little bit. I made way less of a mess on this side because I was ready for it. That's not to say I still couldn't make a big mess out of this because I'm good at that. Come on, slide. I'm taking this apart while it's still mounted to the subframe because it's easier than taking it off and putting a device to hold on to it. Very easy to take apart when you don't have a car in the way. All right, there we go, something to work with. Get a few measurements off of it, get the width of these, distance between them, distance of that off of there, this off here, total length. As long as I get those bolt holes in the right place, get these right spacing out from them, right height, pretty close, I should be able to adjust it with the tie rods to get it to steer straight. Now I just got to figure out exactly how I'm going to make it. All right, I have a notepad. I have some precision measurement equipment here. We'll uh, turn that off, put it back in the box, and we'll go with the old reliable because this is going to be close enough for this job, I think, maybe, I hope. I don't know where that number came from. It's not 17, it's seven. Actually, no, it's six and seven eighths. I'm reading on the wrong side again. Now measuring from the center of these holes right here to the center of that shaft. And that is, holy cow. That's right on an inch and three quarter. Yeah. We get it in the center of the holes instead of on the bottom. I can't really get a good measurement straight up and down, so I have to measure it at an angle going over. And I also have to know, oh yeah, it's not on center either. All right, well, good.
Good. All right. Um, you might have to work on that a little bit. Well, once everything's sitting square and level, that shaft is exactly in the center. Coming off of the, from this to the shaft is exactly in the center. So that'll be easy enough to work with. Now back to where we were at. Yeah. Inch and seven eighths. Now, how far over is this end? Yeah, we'll call that three and a quarter. And 15 and a half. And there you have it. That's the dimensions we're going to work with. That's our highly detailed CAD drawing. Well, no, no CAD on this one. We didn't use any cardboard at all yet. And the other thing we have to have to do this is a bolt that threads into here. This bolt is a 1.5 pitch. And it's a 14 millimeter. Get this around the right way so you can see it. All right, now all I have to do, whoops, had my finger over the top, but now all I have to do is figure out how long it's gonna have to be, make some kind of an end piece that this can sit into, because this has a little bit of a flare to it. So uh, I don't know if I should cut that lip off of it or machine something that will fit down into that hole and then weld that to the end of whatever I'm working with. Decisions, decisions, decisions. These are all things that I'd have to do if I made it exactly the same way as I made the one on my street rail. But what if? What if? Or does a guy just pull the, uh, you know, the center rack right out of this whole thing and just use the center rack as your center section and then just weld to it? Because that's got your threaded rods. That's exactly the right length. You just got to get the spacing right on it so for some new mount holes. Who knows? I ain't decided yet. <laughs> Disassemble. Pull the lines off, drain the fluid out of it. See what we got. You can really tell I have no idea what I'm doing here, but hey, I'm going to tear this thing apart, destroy it in the process, and uh, probably use some parts of it for something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I knew I loved that set of wrenches for some reason. It skips 12. Wow, that one was tight. Woohoo! There's fluid running right out the end of that seal right there. Excuse me while I pick up a bunch of pieces. All right, snap ring. Let's see if we can do this without losing an eye or a finger or anything like that. Uh, 
uh, the snap ring pliers might be too big for the holes. Well, after a bit of a short fight and a different snap ring plier, I got that out of there. And then this just pops off, just smacked it like that. Of course, I'm not really trying to disassemble this thing to put it back together. I'm just trying to tear it apart. So now I got to figure out how to get this shaft out of here. And uh, next thought, remove this cap. With a sharpened screwdriver, we're going to delicately raise this cap up out of here. Oops. Well, I sharpened the screwdriver a little bit too much, I think. Because, I don't know if you can see it on camera, there is a hole right there. Should have been a little gentler, maybe, huh? Oh, well. Hey, it's coming out. Oh, yeah. It's got a bolt, a nut on the bottom of it. Animals. Animals. All right, this is my guess. With an appropriate size punch, we may be able to drive this on out of here. All right, light taps wouldn't move it. One good hard thump shot it across the floor, along with all the fluid that was on it. Big mess on the floor again. It's a good thing that I think of this place as a garage and not the Taj Mahal because all these little grease spots would probably make me angry if I thought it was a Taj Mahal. <laughs> it's a garage, the floor's gonna get greasy. All right. Let's step over here. See how much oil runs out of it. Oh, ain't gonna come out that way. All right, what's the next thing that has to come apart? I'm sure that there's gotta be a piston inside of here. All right, you can't see it in the camera, I'm sure, but down inside here, there is a round snap ring, wire snap ring, that I need to get underneath and pick up and pull out. But in order to do that, I'm tapping the seal down just a little bit because the seal kind of helps keep that snap ring from coming out. And remember, I'm not trying to rebuild this thing, I'm just trying to steal parts out of it. Not even parts to reuse. Parts to weld on, parts to machine on. And I've never tore a power steering rack apart before, so I might learn something. So right, yeah, you can't see that. Anyway, right in there, there's a snap ring, and I'm gonna try to get underneath the edge of it with some kind of a scribe or a pick and lift it up out of there. I don't know if these were ever even made to come out of here or not. We may have to resort to explosives, cut off wheels, things like that. We'll get this thing apart though. Who's we? Me and the mouse in my pocket. There's one guy at work that would laugh his ass off if he heard me say that. It was our management joke. And then one day he bought me a mouse from a pet store so I could carry it around in my pocket and every time a manager said, we need to get this done, I'd just pull a little mouse out of my pocket and said, we're on it. <laughs> All 
I'll pick that up later. Oh, maybe I should pick it up now before I step on it and go skating off across the floor. Well, I've got it moving. I can chase it around in circles. Neither end of it seems to have a, uh, you know, like a cut off lip or an angle under it where you can catch it and pick it up. Slightly smaller diameter punch might get down in there a little better and push the seal back without getting caught on the snap ring. It did back up a tiny bit, but it hasn't backed up enough, I don't think. Whoa, look at there. Ding! It's out! Back over to the bucket. Get that camera pointed in the right direction. I have what I need, and that is a huge mess. A big hard shaft. I'm not sure that's what we're going for, but that's what we got. All right, I don't need the uh, piston on it. Uh, if I use this, I would probably have to preheat quite a bit to weld to it. And I will be very generous with the surface area that I weld because not sure how strong welding to this type of steel will be. And this part could be mission critical. Uh, if uh, this fails, things could get real exciting. But I think if you face this down and you weld your ears on the bottom, that will work. Inspect for cracks uh, on a regular basis once you weld it together. We'll see how this works. This may be how I build these from now on. No, I've built one for this car and one for that thing over there, and that car is not even finished yet. I doubt I'll be building any more. And more drawings. And y'all knew there was going to be cardboard here soon. And that is the general idea of it. Now we just have to make the pieces out of metal and get the dimensions exactly right. Weld it together. Slap it in, and hopefully it goes in a straight line. Chuck it up in the lathe and go for it.
as you can see if I cut very much at all it's starting to slip and it's not warm or anything like that so uh, I think I tried to take too heavy of a cut got it slipping but it, you know I got most of it off I think that'll work smooth it off a little bit should be all right Nice and smooth. Looks good. Well, I've carved out some various and assorted pieces of metal on the bandsaw and getting ready to drill a pilot hole in it. Probably need to tighten that chuck a bit. It already slipped a little. Change out the drill bit, drill it size. I think that hole's big enough anyway. Yep works and in theory that little spacer in between these plates Fire the should down. fit right in there uh, yeah I think it's gonna work and then those will get welded to the rack and the whole thing should work like a non-steerable steering rack. I think it's gonna work. I have faith. Faith in my skills? I don't know, but faith in my good luck, I think. So that should sit right there. This will sit like that. And these will be bent in so that they touch the rack and hold, you know, lay against the edge so I can weld it to that. That'll hold the space. That'll hold it from moving left to right. I think we got something here. All of these are gonna have to be shortened on this bottom edge because the aluminum casting that it goes into curves. So the most I can have is about three quarter inch from the center of the hole down. So all of them need to be shortened about three eighths of an inch. sandblast them make them look pretty uh, yeah right uh, not worried about them looking pretty uh, kind of trying to make the paint stick to them anyway this Harbor Freight sandblaster works pretty good after uh, you know two or six or twelve modifications got a bunch of videos on my channel about the modifications I've done and one more coming about adding more airflow and using larger diameter fittings that really improves how a sandblaster works All right, let's get these things into place and, uh, you know, jigged up with a lot of precision. Take note of the two small wooden blocks that are actually jigging this up into incredible precision. Well, here we are, several days later. I uh, shot a little of this high quality paint on this thing. 
I was going to give it at least 24 hours to dry, and then I got kind of lazy. Anyway, I'm ready to put it in. I think it should do a little bit better than the old method I had of holding the steering in a straight line, which was this clamp to the frame of the car with the uh, steering shaft stuck through it. It worked temporarily. So now there's nothing to do but get this thing in the car. Um, I've ordered some boots off of eBay, and of course with eBay it takes a while to get stuff. But once those boots come in, I will post some kind of an update on whether or not they work. Anyway, let's put this thing in the car. Just drop it down into place. Maybe put a bolt in the hole, it fit. Bolt number two. Snug them down a little bit. Apply final torque. Ooh, still seems kind of loose. Let's go one more. Yeah, that feels better. Rise, rise. Get a little room to work here. Get this tie rod end out of here. Get it spun down on the tie rod to approximately the right length. Get this thing going somewhat straight. And once we get it close, we'll break out the precision alignment tools and throw one of them precision alignments on it. Well, I think I'll wrap this video up right here. I still got to put the brakes on, run the brake cables through, torque everything down, put kind of an alignment on it so it does go in a perfectly straight line. Well, perfect enough for this job. Anyway, if the rear end goes in a straight line and the front end goes in a straight line, the whole car should go in a straight line. That's going to work. Like, share, subscribe, especially subscribe. A lot of people that watch these videos aren't subscribed to the channel. Oh, I can't say a lot. Well, there's about 400 people that actually watch these videos now, which is actually pretty good, I guess, considering I don't put out videos on a regular basis. Anyway, that's all for now. Done rambling. Like, share, subscribe. And, of course, I have to throw this on the end of every video, even though it's uh, old footage.